gonna talk of organic chemistry starting from today onwards and to do that we need to start from the very beginning we need to know what organic chemistry is where exactly it lies and why we are so interested in organic chemistry that there's a whole section dedicated to it so for that first we're going to see the five main streams into which chemistry is further divided into so chemistry is classified as inorganic chemistry organic chemistry physical chemistry analytical chemistry and biochemistry so these are the five main categories into which chemistry can be further divided into now our particular interest lies upon organic chemistry which is the chemistry of compounds that contain the element carbon and with this definition i know for sure that you are going to think about it for a while and then try to think why exactly carbon what's so special about carbon there's so much to learn about carbon containing compounds and if carbon is in group 4 so not if actually carbon is in group 4 why don't we actually consider about the other elements which are also in group 4 why isn't there a specific study under which for example let's say silicon containing compounds why do we specifically talk of carbon containing compounds and this can be explained in two main points before me reading these two points points to you let me explain it to you in this way so carbon being in group 4 has a valence of 4 which means it has 4 outer electrons and in order to gain a complete outer electronic configuration or a complete valence shell what it loves to do is share electrons and gain an octet or have a complete shell of eight electrons in it so how can exactly carbon do this it does this by sharing electrons meaning it forms covalent bonds so carbon can form covalent bonds with itself meaning you can get carbon carbon single bonds or carbon carbon double bonds or even carbon carbon triple bonds other than this carbon can also form carbon hydrogen covalent bonds so mainly throughout organic chemistry you will specifically find out carbon carbon containing compounds as well as carbon hydrogen containing compounds these are the most abundantly formed covalent compounds when it comes to co covalent you know bonds when it comes to carbon other than this there are we can also find carbon bonding to heteroatoms such as oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus or even any element from group 7. So it could be chlorine, bromine, fluorine, iodine, so any element as such. Now we are going to see why carbon does this. So if we particularly compare the bond energies of carbon carbon bonds carbon hydrogen bonds and carbon bonding with the heteroatoms such as fluorine chlorine oxygen uh, carbon oxygen single bonds it could be carbon oxygen double bonds it could be when you compare the bond energies of such bonds with the same sort of bond energies that silicon bonds form for example the bond energy of a silicon silicon bond or the bond energy of a silicon hydrogen bond so basically bond energy means the amount of energy you need in order to break this bond so let's say carbon carbon single bond if you want to provide some energy in order to break this and get two carbons on either side what you have to do is you have to provide 346 kilojoules of energy per mole of carbon carbon single bonds so all these values which i have given in this particular diagram are given in the units of kilojoules per mole so the very prominent factor that you are going to say is that carbon containing bonds have a higher bond energy when you compare with silicon containing bonds 
which means you need to provide a higher amount of energy in order to break the bond among any of these carbon containing bonds. So it simply means that carbon can form strong bonds among itself or with other atoms. Therefore, that is the first point which I can explain to you simply as carbon atoms can form strong bonds to form rings and chains. And the second thing, if you can remember, I did mention to you a while ago that carbon hydrogen bonds are also abundantly found in organic chemistry. So that's because of the small electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen, which leads to the formation of more and more carbon hydrogen covalent bonds. So with these two reasons, we are going to see why specifically we have we are interested in carbon containing compounds and not only that next we are going to see what exactly is the importance of organic chemistry in our day-to-day -day lives so this can be categorized in certain fields such as medicine and healthcare, food and nutrition so on and so forth and you can take particular examples so I have given you particular examples here which shows the importance of organic chemistry in our daily lives. So if you take medicine and healthcare under which, let's take medicine. For example, you have painkillers such as paracetamol, ibuprofen, antibiotics such as penicillin and anesthetics. And if you take vitamins and hormones, you have vitamin C, insulin and steroid hormones. And for diagnosis purposes, you can use organic dyes. So these are only some of the examples that I have mentioned. And it cannot be, you know, specifically mentioned that these are the only areas in which organic chemistry is used in. There's so much more. So out of the examples or the areas into which organic chemistry is or organic compounds are applied in, I have taken certain examples to just to show you and then when it comes to food and nutrition, so you have carbohydrates, proteins, fats. And then there are food additive, additives such as preservatives, flavorings and colorants. And when it comes to cooking, the browning of bread, the caramelization and the fermentation can be explained by organic chemistry as well. And when it comes to agriculture, fertilizers and pesticides, Plant growth regulators make use of organic compounds and organic chemistry is used to explain certain uh, chemical, you know, natures in soil chemistry as well. And when it comes to household products, you have soaps and detergents, which are made of fatty acids and other organic compounds and plastics. For example, polyethylene, PVC and packaging materials make use of organic compounds. When it comes to electronics and technology, you know, there are semiconductors which can be made of organic LEDs, which are also known as OLEDs, in phones and TV screens. And adhesives and coatings which make use of organic polymers. Ink and printing are also making use of organic dyes and pigments. When it comes to environment and sustainability, you have biodegradable plastics which are made of organic polymers and green chemistry and waste treatment also make use of organic chemistry. And certain other fields include clothing and textiles where you find natural fibers, for example, cotton, wool, zinc, which are made of molecules like cellulose and proteins. And then there are synthetic fibers, example, nylon, polyester, acrylic. There are certain dyes as well which make use of organic compounds. And when it comes to fuel and energy, there's fossil fuels, for example, petrol, diesel and natural gas, which are simply hydrocarbons. You're going to see very next what hydrocarbons are. So there are also biofuels, for example, ethanol and biodiesel and batteries and solar cells where in electrolytes and modern flexible solar panels, organic compounds are used in. When it comes to cosmetics and personal care, which I personally find super interesting to see or to know or to, you know, simply understand how organic chemistry is used in. 
and products such as skin care products, hair care products, you know, perfumes and deodorants and makeup include organic compounds. So with that, we are going to move into organic chemistry. So now you know what it is, where it stands, what areas we use organic chemistry in. And now is where we start organic chemistry for real. Thank you.